Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today's video is gonna focus on body fat percentages and specifically the skin fold. So what do you even have to look forward to? I'm going to be addressing what is skin fold, why should you care about it? What do we use it for? And how can this tool be used for you? And how can you use Skinfold as a tool to measure your own physique progress, fat loss, weight gain, muscle gain, maintaining, all the above. So regardless of your goal, maybe you can use Skinfold as a tool for you. So the very first thing I wanna to touch on is body fat percentage readings, right? So we hear like, what's your body fat percentage? We have all these different methods, um, a variety of methods, A mode ultrasound, DEXA, the gold standard. So we have all of these different methods as a means to measure your body fat percentage. If you read any scientific literature, you'll hear things, a mode ultrasound, DEXA, underwater weighing, BOD pod, in body, BIA, and then our focus today, skin fold calipers. I do want to note that all of the things I just listed use assumptions to make an estimate of your body fat percentage. Skin fold is an indirect measurement of body fat percentage, and what does that exactly mean? So why is DEXA this gold standard in research? The DEXA is a two compartment model, and all that means is it's showing your fat and lean body mass. When you read something that says lean body mass, it isn't a direct measurement of how much muscle that you have. Lean body mass with using these tools include things like muscle, skin, bone. Something I really want to point out is water. So you'll see people go in and get their body fat percentage done and they'll be like, man, yeah, I gained like five pounds of muscle in eight weeks. Wrong! Again, remember, lean body mass does include total body water. These fluctuations in your gaining or losing muscle in the, in the matter of eight weeks, it may potentially, possibly, likely be your um, total body water changing. I'm going to be as transparent as possible. I hate to break it to you, but there is really no direct measurement or way to tell you exactly how fat you are. Unless you agree to something very, very specific, which I don't think you would want to do, so here it is. To give you an idea of exactly your body fat percentage, we would need to melt all of your skin off, all of your body fat off, like you were a cadaver, weigh it out, and there you go. There's your body fat percentage. Let's take a step back from the nuance here. Is there really a direct way to tell you exactly how much body fat you have on your body? No, unless we melt your skin off and then weigh it. And then we'll tell you how much body fat you have. And I say that because all of these methods are indirect, which make assumptions based on a variety of different things that is taken from equations and assumptions made from these direct measurements, AKA those cadavers. In that way, we can make equations which give us assumptions on just how much body fat that you may have. Again, may because there is no absolutes here. So now that I have addressed exactly the different measurements for body fat percentage, what is body fat percentage, and specifically honing in on the skin fold, what is a skin fold? You see skin fold, calipers, what is it? The skin fold tool itself is called a caliper, and you can use these calipers to assess one's body composition. A skin fold caliper is used to assess your skin fold thickness. So when I perform a skin fold test on someone, I always explain it like this. I'm literally taking your skin, I'm pinching it, and the calipers will end up doing this. And the thickness, the thickness here of your skin is exactly what the calipers will read in millimeters. Now, how can I use that as a tool to tell you how much body fat that you have? So with the readings from the skin fold, um, we're gonna assess your skin thickness, and that's gonna be used to predict the total amount of body fat that you can have. This method of skin fold is based on the hypothesis that the body fat is equally distributed all over the body, and that the thickness of the skin fold is a measure of your subcutaneous fat. Now, 
there is a strong relationship between the amount of subcutaneous fat and your total body fat that you have. And with these skin fold readings that we get from seven different sites, and displayed is my wonderful model, Dr. Lane Norton, and I'm going through the seven different sites on how exactly I perform these tests. So the seven different sites that you're gonna see uh, me pinch on my wonderful model um, are the axilla, chest, abdominal, subscapular, super, iliac, tricep, and the thigh. So after I have gotten all of the measurements of the seven different sites that I just listed, they're known as the Jackson and Pollock seven different sites. And what I will do is I will take all these measurements, enter them into a computer, and again, the Jackson and Pollock formula that, that we use is not a direct assessment of body fat percentage. Again, I did mention that it was indirect. So again, we really can't have a direct measurement of somebody's body fat percentage. So the skin fold is a measure of body density and the total body weight relative to the area that it occupies. And that can be used to estimate your body fat percentage. And again, I want to highlight the fact that I said estimate because there really is no true measurement of telling you exactly how much body fat that you do have. So another question we get asked a lot is, are these measurements even accurate at all? And is, is the skin fold specifically accurate? So within the USF Human Performance Lab and USF Physique Enhancement Laboratory run by Dr. Bill Campbell, we're gonna use skin fold as a means to double check our A-mode ultrasound readings. And that's for a different video, but that's why we really do use the skin fold in research is they really test the skill of the technician in terms of comparing skin fold to ultrasound. Pro tip here, if you do have a skilled technician, the results between skin fold and ultrasound should be around 1% difference um, for error. Now with skin fold, there's really little information on its validity. And validity is a term used in science that asks the question, does this test measure what is it, what it is intended to measure? And from my perspective as a person who conducts these tests, has seen both sides in the, in the research, been the subject, um, been the subject and the scientists here, we often get asked, how do we make these tests as accurate as possible? A skilled technician needs to run your test, number one. And two, the same skilled technician needs to do your tests, not only on that day, but do that continuously. So let's say you come in um, day one, I'll do your body fat percentages, and then eight weeks later, you come back in, you're gonna want me to do your measurements, and why? To make this as accurate as possible because there really is no standardized procedure in terms of how much you pinch, it's gonna vary from technician to technician. So you're gonna want the same person to do it to get the most accurate uh, measurement possible. And I also want to thank my wonderful model, Dr. Lane Norton. Um, I do wanna note in my past videos that he did mention that I was the best body fat percent percentage analyst Yes, he did say it just like that. So thank you, Lane. That comment may have went to my head, but you know what they say, if the shoe fits, you might as well wear it. So why would you even want to perform the skin fold on yourself? What can it be used for? I just addressed what is the skin fold and I talked about all the different body fat percentage readings out there as possible. Now I'm going to describe um, why would you want this done. So again, we are using skin folds as a means to measure progress over time. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you want to lose some body fat. You come into the lab or you take your skin fold calipers, you do seven different sites on your body and you're given a number. Let's say you're given 20% body fat. And you can take that for what it is. It's like, all right, like 20%, you just take that number. Um, it doesn't really mean much besides that's just your starting point, right? So what we can do is let's say you've been cutting for eight weeks. Maybe you're working with a coach. Maybe you're just doing it by yourself. You go away eight weeks. Whatever happens between now and then, you come back to me. I do your body fat percentage reading. And I say, yo, Sally you're 14%, you lost 6% body fat. And Sally's gonna be like, oh yeah, like I'm feeling pretty good, like I lost 6%. Did Sally really need to know that she lost 6% body fat? No, 
but it can be used as a tool to ensure you, hey, I'm making progress and what I'm doing is absolutely working and I am 100% sure because I have these results and it told me I lost 6%. So should Sally compare her body fat percentage reading to Joe? Let's say Joe is 14% body fat and then Sally's 14% body fat. Sally and Joe look a lot different. And if that says anything, 14% on someone, it's gonna be a way different 14% um, on two different people. We know what a skin fold is. We know this is just an indirect measure. How can this actually help you and how can this apply to you? Number one, you can use skin fold as a means to just see where you are. Whether you're dieting, whether you're bulking, whether you're reverse dieting, whether you're getting ready for a bodybuilding show. All these different things, you can just be told exactly what you are in terms of, hey, where am I at and where do I wanna go? So regardless of where you go, you can always come back and see, hey, is, is my approach making me gain body fat or making me lose body fat? Is the result that I have kind of earned reflective of what I want to become? And if that's to gain muscle, lose fat, reverse diet, all of that, this can be really, be a really, really good tool for you to see where you are and where you wanna go and if what you're doing is exactly um, working. And this can be really helpful for people who, you know, maybe don't have a coach, right? And they have to go through the trial and error process. You know, I did it for years. I started my fitness journey when I was just 16 years old. So I, I didn't have access to these tools. I just lifted weights because it was fun and I was seeing changes in my body. Maybe I couldn't afford a coach then, right? So this would have been a really cool tool for me to use. And even if you are um, able to have the opportunity to work with a coach, um, your coach can also use these results to dictate, hey, like besides the physical you know, change, is what I'm doing working. How often should you get these tests done? Um, I'm gonna say for a real difference in terms of fat loss, you can get this done every four to five weeks. If you're kind of looking for more of a start and end type of phase, maybe every eight to 12 weeks. If you're bulking, AKA trying to gain muscle, I would say you could get these tests done at least every six, 12 weeks just to ensure you're not gaining too much body fat because the whole idea of not dieting is to put on muscle and not gain a bunch of body fat. If you are very overweight, this method may not work very well for you and why. The skin fold calipers can only go so wide and I say that as a means to just present the reality. These can be used as a tool. The tool only goes as wide as 50 millimeters. So to make this really accurate, um, the test becomes very inaccurate if the general skin fold thickness exceeds the width of the caliper. Jackson and Pollock also has a three side equation as well, which all you need to do is look that up online and it will guide you. But to keep this as accurate as possible, I would say give yourself the same conditions every time you get your body fat percentage done. Um, I know for the lab, you have to come in fasted without eating any food, drinking any water, and that's just to ensure that we have the most accurate and controlled approach as possible. So if you guys want your body fat percentage done using skin fold calipers, I highly recommend either number one, getting your own pair of calipers or just coming into the USF uh, Human Performance Lab and getting your tests done by a trained technician and it can be a fun outing for you as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, hit that like button push that subscribe button. Once a week, I'm gonna be putting out a, a new video. So excited to start this journey on YouTube, provide you guys the most transparent, direct, and honest interpretation of these things that um, the internet can make really confusing sometimes. So I like to describe my approach as, what are we talking about? Why does it matter and how can it help you? So if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I highly recommend applying. Um, spots are very limited as I value, again, just the genuine connection actually caring and giving you results, right? Click the link below to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching to work directly with me and my team at Physique by Science. And thank you guys again so much for tuning in. I, I hope you found this helpful. Um, again, like, subscribe, share. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys next week.